Good afternoon. We'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, welcome to today's SPS On Conversation, where our topic is the benefits of EDI, how EDI can simplify and improve your business. This certainly hasn't been the year anyone has expected, and retail companies needed to pivot quickly to keep up with the new shopping trends and variable order volumes. We've invited several of your peers to share their experiences with you today, as well as several experts from SPS. You'll hear how EDI should adapt to a business's needs and how these individuals are weathering these crazy times with SPS Commerce fulfillment for EDI. I'm Kirby Carr, Director of Sales here at SPS and your host today. I'm here to guide our conversation, make sure we answer your questions and wrap up on time. If you do have a question, go ahead and drop it in the Zoom Q&A section below and we'll be sure to answer it during the Q&A time with our panel. Also stay alert during the events as we will be drawing, drawing for some prizes later on. We are recording today's session and all participants are on mute. You should be hearing audio at this time. Uh, you can also test your sound by following the prompts on the screen. Again, if you do have a question, feel free to drop it in that Zoom Q&A section below and we'll answer it during the Q&A portion with the panel during the event. Speaking of the panel, let's go ahead and meet our panelists. First, Ginger Lollier, e-commerce manager at Glamos Wire, a gardening products company that saw orders skyrocket this summer. Second, Rachel Hall, EDI and operations manager at JLab Audio, whose earbuds and other audio products are helping many of us work from home. Welcome, Rachel. Joe Limer, Senior Director of Technology at Design Resources, a longtime EDI user who manages many business units and helps his team navigate business challenges. Great having you here, Joe. Andrew Ray, a Customer Success Manager at SPS who helps companies optimize their EDI experiences every day. Hey, Andrew. Uh, we have Megan Brang, Senior Product Manager at SPS, focusing on our fulfillment product for EDI. Thanks for joining us, Megan. We also have Emily Curran, a senior product manager at SPS who specializes in our system automation EDI solutions. Hey, Emily. All right, and to start us off, I'm actually gonna hand it over to Megan from SPS. So Megan, go ahead and take it away. Great, thank you, Kirby. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to have Ginger from Glamos Wire and Andrew from SPS with me today for our first conversation. Ginger, can you start us off by telling us about Glamos Wire, your role, and what your company has experienced in 2020? Yes, I would love to. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ginger Lallier, and I work for Glamos Wire. Our company has been around since 1899. Ooh, that's awesome, right? Um, we provide plant supports, um, extension hooks and um, landscape staples, um, but uh, the majority of our company is plant supports. Um, and in 2020, with everybody being home, working from home and with the pandemic, business boomed. Um, a little bit of history, in 2019, the e-commerce company or business had done $153,000. So far to date, 2020, we are at $947,000. I mean, wow, right? We're talking a 519% growth rate. I was hired in October 19, or 2019, excuse me, to grow the e-commerce business. And it's been an awesome experience for myself. Um, challenging though, because of the incredible orders that have come in and we were not ready to get orders at that level. Wow, that sounds like quite the amazing roller coaster, Ginger. Thank you for sharing. Excited to hear more about that in a little bit here. Andrew, tossing it over to you, can you introduce yourself and share with us about your role at SPS and a little bit about what you've been hearing from the suppliers that you work with regarding this year's challenges? Yeah, thank you, Megan. So my name is Andrew Ray and I'm a customer success manager here at SPS Commerce. I work primarily with our SPS customers who utilize our fulfillment solution, working with them to gain a better understanding of my customers' businesses and business processes. 
So as customers begin to share with me about their businesses, together the customer and I look to identify opportunities, pain points, and bottlenecks. So we can discuss how they can better leverage either their current customer solutions or potential other SPS solutions that can help further expedite the fulfillment process. Now this year has been particularly interesting. What I've found when working with customers, many of them have seen, like Ginger said, exponential growth in their direct to consumer businesses. Several of them have never done direct to consumer before. So this is really a, a big change event for them. So to answer your question, suppliers have really been challenged to either adopt the dropship order management model for the first time or accommodate a very large number of orders that have come in this year that they weren't necessarily used to previously. Uh, and on top of that, all their employees are working remotely or operating under COVID-19 restrictions and guidelines. So what this means is efficiency is really a top priority for them as they work to get through these orders in a fashion that meets the retailer's SLAs or service level agreements. So they're getting the orders out on time and avoiding order cancellations. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Andrew. Sounds pretty relatable to what, what Ginger shared. And on that note, Ginger, with all of this year's twists and, tur twists and turns, excuse me, can you tell us specifically how Glamos Wire's EDI needs changed and how you were able to adapt to those changes? Yes. Well, it started out, we had, we were hired like 12 temp agents. We had family coming in, everybody. I mean, we were manually entering in all the UPS labels, customers, name, address, phone number, all the requirements between FedEx and UPS that people had to enter in into their portals and to print the labels. Well, we contacted SPS Commerce. We were just like totally overwhelmed. Like, wow, can you help us? What can we do? You know, how can you help us? We went from manually entering every single label to printing off 50 labels at one time. I mean, it, it brought it to where we could manage back to the three people we had in the office and were able to let go the temp agents, let our families go, let them go home. <laughs> Everything was just, it was fabulous. It, it, it was just really a time-saving money. We didn't go through as many reams of paper. We we're going through boxes of paper, printing the packing slips, handing them to everybody going, okay, here, manually enter all this. No more. It was, it was just taken care of. Wow, what a shift. That's amazing to hear. Thank you for sharing, Ginger. Andrew, similar question. How about for you? What have been some of the most common areas where suppliers have been able to optimize their EDI experience to be more flexible? And could you share some of the results that you've seen in helping suppliers? Yeah, absolutely. Really good question. So what I would say is this year, the most common areas where suppliers have needed to be flexible is accommodating higher than normal order volumes, particularly the dropship order management model type orders, or they've seen dramatic spikes in order volumes over a very short period of time. One of my favorite stories I like to talk about from this year involves a company who sells bidets. At the beginning of the COVID-19 lockdown, toilet paper was in, in really very high demand and this customer saw over a 1000% increase in their samsclub.com order volume. Together with this customer, we were able to run through how to utilize quick entry in their fulfillment account, how to utilize batch processing in their fulfillment account. Previously, the customer had been using, doing these orders one at a time and it worked. However, when they saw that 1000% increase, that just wasn't going to work anymore. So the end result after our conversation, the customer was able to get all their orders out on time and avoid any order cancellations with samsclub.com. Well, that's great. And I'm happy to hear you call out some of those specific fulfillment features because we're going to be able to demo those here in just a minute for all of the participants on the call today. Uh, thanks for that answer and all the great work that you've been doing this year, Andrew. Uh, Ginger, can you share a little bit about how SPS worked alongside you during this transition and maybe a little bit about how it shifted your day to day after working with Andrew? Yes, um, when we connected with SPS Commerce, Andrew Ray was actually the person who helped me immensely. He was fabulous. He, um, you know, it was something new for me. And as I was struggling at times to try to understand part of the systems, he would get on a Zoom call with me and walk me through on the computer. He would send me videos to, you know, just so I could visually see what it was and I could walk through and understand where I needed to be, the information I needed to plug in. And it was just, it was a very 
easy way to learn it and to understand it. And it was just very, I was very appreciated to have that kind of help from Andrew and um, make it so easy to understand. Great. That's awesome. Thank you, Ginger. Thank you both for all of those insights. I do have one final question for each of you. Uh, we'll start with Andrew first. What advice would you give others on this call today about how they could improve how they do EDI? Really good question. So what I would really want to call out is if you are looking for assistance on how to improve really any EDI kind of process, please reach out and leverage the experience and resources SPS has to offer. I always tell my customers, if we don't ask if something is possible or if processes can be improved, then nothing will change. So it all begins with that ask. It all begins really with allowing us to partner with you, discussing as a group what's going on, what we want to improve, and then working together to reach our, our common objective. At SPS, we really love seeing our suppliers grow and be successful. So leverage the experience we have to offer and partner with us to address really your business needs and the needs that come along with accommodating EDI. Okay, thank you, Andrew, appreciate it. Ginger, how about from you? What would your advice be to some of the participants on today's call about what they could do to improve EDI in their processes? I guess the best advice I could say is like, even for me, I haven't even, you know, I've been here just a year. I hadn't even been here four months before I had started in, and started investigating like SPS Commerce, what they could do for us. And I guess it was going to the top execs and proving to them and showing them how much time we can save. And I, I, it was an expense that I was asking for, but once it all came full fledged, it was a cost savings to us going to the program that we went to, you know, the paper, like I said, um, all the people that we had to do to um, enter the orders. It, um, I would just, I would tell everybody that it is worth the expense and the time. You get your time back. You can concentrate on other things in your job that you need to concentrate on than putting all your efforts into such a manual type entry. This automation is awesome and it saves, saves in the long run. Hey, thank you so much for both of your answers and that advice. We are going to move on to the demo portion of today's call, but Ginger and Andrew, rest assured, will be back for our Q&A to answer questions later on in the call. So with that, I will go ahead and begin a little demo here today. My colleague, Emily Curran and I just wanna walk everyone through high level functionality of our fulfillment product, its offerings and the different features that help deliver some of the value that Ginger and Andrew have walked us through today. So what we're looking at here is the fulfillment login page, which is our dashboard where all new orders are displayed. We also have insight tiles at the top of the dashboard here, which allow a quick snapshot into your top priorities to try and help you organize your day. So you can see here, you can click into each of these to view what orders have been received since the last time you logged in, which orders are ready for invoice or payment versus which of those are ready for shipment or ready for acknowledgement. You simply click into one of these to just view all of that information. Another nice call out about Insight Tiles is that they are customizable by user seat. So if you have a situation where you have a breakdown of responsibility by trading partner, which is something that is commonly seen by SPS, you can make it so these Insight Tiles only display the retailers or trading partners for whom you are responsible. You can view any order by simply clicking on it. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example here. One of the ways that we help make processing orders a little bit easier and more streamlined is by standardizing the way that you see orders. So all of the retailers in the SPS network tend to send their data differently and in different ways. That being said, however, we standardize the layout and look of all of the orders so that they look the same. So you can expect to find really important and key information in a consistent place each time you're viewing an order. So for example, important dates about the order, the type of order, where it's shipping to, and then of course, the order information itself, what items are being ordered, what price points, and any special notes. All of these orders are also available to be printed or downloaded into a CSV format if that's helpful for you to manage your business. If any orders require packing slips, that is of course available and part of the fulfillment experience and offering. 
One of the top features of fulfillment is actually our workflow. So every time you're viewing an order for a unique trading partner, we will actually lay out for you the required steps or checkpoints that you need to do for that trading partner. It might not seem like a lot to manage those differing retailer requirements, but the minute you have two, five, and 10 trading partners, it can be a lot to manage which trading partners require a purchase order acknowledgement first, for example, versus a shipment being first. So this layout just helps keep it easy for you to manage and maintain to make sure that you hit all of those requirements. A really commonly required document is the shipment. And in this example, it's the first required step. So let's go ahead and actually take a look at a shipment. You'll notice that when you open a document in fulfillment, we actually display to you all of the required fields to ensure that you are fully compliant with your trading partners and don't miss any of those really important required fields. All of those are highlighted in an orange asterisk. You may also notice that a lot of this information is auto-populating. We have features like auto-sourcing and auto-sourcing rules where you can store information that is repeatedly required to streamline and make those processes more efficient, uh, like Andrew and Ginger were talking about earlier. You can see here that ship date is required, so you would simply populate it with whichever date you're shipping. Another really great feature of fulfillment that I want to highlight for you today is our carrier service offering. This allows you to book shipments with the carriers you use, whether it be FedEx or UPS or Purolator, directly in the fulfillment experience. So a lot of our customers before going with fulfillment are separately meeting their ASN EDI requirements and then going out to a separate portal and entering that same information twice. So what we've done here is fully streamlined that experience and made it easier for customers to meet not only that EDI ASN requirement, but also that booking of shipment requirements all in one spot. Another key call out and awesome feature about SPS carrier service is that we have rate shopping. So you can find the most economic option for your business. So in this example, if I'm looking to ship with say FedEx and I wanna find the most cost-effective option that still hits my guaranteed delivery or ship by date, I can simply shop shipping rate. You can see here that I have a ton of different options to sort by. I would select that most appropriate price point for my business. And again, keeping in mind that delivery date. And then I would simply book that shipment. So again here, what's awesome is I've not only met the EDI ASN requirement for my trading partner, but I've actually gotten that FedEx label right in this experience as well. So I've taken two disparate processes which can result in errors or mistype of information, not to mention be a huge time suck for my business and put this all into one process. So that's shipping. A lot of times the next required document of course is the invoice. Everybody loves sending invoices and getting paid, but let's talk for a second about an example that Andrew and Ginger brought up earlier here where we're seeing a pretty large increase in dropship or direct to consumer orders where customers are maybe needing to invoice more than one order at a time. So we do offer something called batch processing. So instead of doing that invoice one by one, something that Andrew mentioned earlier, you can look for all of the orders that you're ready to invoice. And batch processing is not just for invoicing. This can be for purchase order acknowledgements. This can be for shipments as well. You would simply select all of the orders that are applicable. You can see in this example, I'm selecting two orders, but you could select five orders. You could select 10 orders hundreds of orders, however many that you need to process at a time. And what this will do is create all of those documents simultaneously instead of expecting you to go in and complete them one by one. As you can see here, there's only a couple required fields for this document because of those powerful optimization features that we referenced earlier, like auto sourcing that pre-populates a lot of the information. So in this example, you can see here, a net due date is required. Let's say that date was the same for all invoices. We have this nice push value feature here. The next step would simply be to enter the invoice numbers that are applicable and relevant for those documents. And then you're ready to send those documents off to your trading partner. One of the other really valuable features of fulfillment is some of our really powerful visibility and reporting features that my colleague, Emily Curran, is going to talk about in just a moment. But before we dive into that, I will go ahead and hand it over to Emily so she can talk about some of the additional add-on features that fulfillment has to offer. 
Thanks, Megan. So to support the varying needs of our customers, additional features can be added to fulfillment to provide even more automation. And the one feature I'd like to talk about is system automation, which allows you to integrate EDI transactions directly with your system. This not only eliminates the need to hand key and purchase order data to your system or removes the need for duplicate efforts on invoicing, for example, but it saves time and reduces risk of error. So as you can see on the screen, fulfillment can connect to any system of record. We've worked with hundreds of different ERPs, accounting systems, warehouse management systems, you name it. So whether you're a small startup company that is just getting set up on QuickBooks, an enterprise organization that is running SAP, or somewhere in between, our team of experts will prescribe the most streamlined solution to meet your business requirements. So to talk through how we do this, we simplify the process for you by owning all of the trading partner mapping and handling all of those requirements on their behalf. So this includes not only the mapping, like I mentioned, but also any of the individual connectivity methods that a trading partner might have and the translation of that data. So we're normalizing all of that unique data that they're sending into a standard, and that allows us to transform it into the format that you need to align with your business and system processes. The result is a single point of connection for you to manage between SPS and your system. So you no longer have to deal with any of the different partner requirements, the point-to-point -point mapping, testing, or changes that are required to support EDI. We do all of that for you through fulfillment. In addition to ERP and EDI integration, connecting to a third-party logistics provider is another vital aspect of the supply chain. If you have chosen to work with a 3PL for warehousing and order fulfillment, getting them the right information at the right time is critical. With fulfillment, you have options for exchanging purchase order, shipment, or inventory information. And what we can do is either send that automatically where we route orders to your 3PL on your behalf or convert their shipping information into the trading partner required advanced ship notice, or it can be done dynamically where you can review that data prior to sending it to your 3PL or back to your trading partner. So next, I'd like to showcase the visibility and reporting features that Megan mentioned earlier, which provide complete visibility into your data flow so you can get greater insights into transactions. This will help you answer questions like, was an order received? Has a trading partner acknowledged an invoice? And have any errors occurred? Let's take a look at an order. So here you can see how SPS received the data, transformed it, and delivered it to your system. So this includes the business user view that you can see on your screen, as well as the X12 EDI data format that's sent by your trading partner or whatever format they provide and the format that your system requires. So this is full end-to-end -end visibility at your fingertips. And we've really designed fulfillment so that any user, whether technical or not, can easily complete steps or take action. So let's say, for example, that an order failed to import into your system. Within fulfillment, you were able to look at the data and you saw that your trading partner ordered an item that you did not have set up in your system. After setting that item up in your system, you need that order resent. You have the ability to do that directly from fulfillment so that order can be sent back to your system to import successfully and allow you to continue the fulfillment process, ensuring that there aren't any delays or bottlenecks. In addition to the ability to re-deliver your own data, fulfillment also comes with standard uh, reporting capabilities. These allow you to more easily reconcile between your system and SPS. So these reports that come standard include what inbound documents you've received, outbound documents you've sent, or what documents may be missing that functional acknowledgement that really lets you know your trading partner received the data. All of these reports can be scheduled so you can receive them daily via email but you can also build and subscribe to these custom reports based on your business needs. So to recap, SPS Commerce Fulfillment is a full service EDI solution that provides the people, process and technology to quickly connect you to any trading partner so you can achieve 100% compliance and it also can scale to meet your needs. So what Megan and I were able to show you today is really just a taste of how having a full service partner can help you react with agility and make changing times less challenging. Now, we'd love to hear um, from you and have you share which of the following would help your business most. Kirby, can you go ahead and share our poll? Perfect. 
Perfect. So if everyone could take some time to indicate what part of EDI optimization appeals most to you, and we'll wait for some of the results. All right. So not surprisingly, it looks like the poll identified that most of you are looking to reduce data entry. So hopefully between what Ginger, Andrew shared and, and what we'll hear from our panelists next, um, you will get to hear a little bit more insight into how we can help make that happen. So I'd like to continue the conversation now with our second group of panelists. We are delighted to have Joe from DRI and Rachel from JLab Audio here today. Joe, let's start off by having you introduce yourself, your company, and tell us a little bit more about your EDI environment. Yeah, thanks, Emily. Um, so as you can see on my little Zoom subtitle there, uh, we actually have a number of different companies. They're all apparel focused. So design resources or DRI uh, is focused around importing apparel. So simplifying that process for ourselves and for other companies. So that's what DRI does. And shortly after that, we started a headwear company uh, called Caps Direct. And so they make uh, some of these hats that you see behind me, they design those and they do that for any other company. So if you wanna get uh, hats with your logo on it or more appropriately uh, face coverings with your name on it, uh, we'd be happy to do that. So that's what those two companies do. And then uh, 15 years ago, we started Drydeck, which is why you see all this stuff behind me. Um, so we're an outerwear brand. And uh, so anyway, we help folks that like to be socially distant year round, uh, equip them with gear for being outside and staying warm or staying cool, depending on the season. And then 11 years ago, we started a exclusive license agreement with Nike. So uh, every college where you see swoosh on the field or the court, in some way, we're assisting Nike and their customers from getting product from a Nike factory uh, here domestically and decorated and distributed. So uh, that's over 1,600 colleges. So in terms of SBS and EDI, obviously we're using fulfillment. Uh, we've gone deeper, we're integrated with select trading partners uh, using XML there. We use Fulfillment Monitor, which we saw demo just a little bit ago, uh, the label API, all those things. So basically we get the EDI document in, we get that into our SAP Business One product, and then uh, we send that information out to either a domestic decorator that we partner with who ends up shipping that out and decorating it, or uh, we send it to our warehouse located here in Kansas City and get that out to the customer. So um, yeah, so we're, we're using a lot of different things across all of our different companies. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. I'm sure we've got a couple of folks in the audience today that are probably in similar situations managing multiple companies and brands. So it's great to have those insights. Rachel, can you tell us a little bit more about JLab Audio, your role and how you're using EDI? Uh, sure, hello everybody. Um, my name is Rachel Hall and I'm with JLab Audio for six years, uh, specifically in EDI and operations. Prior to my time with JLab, I spent 10 years in sporting goods, specifically racket sports, and also in EDI. Uh, so EDI has actually been around a lot longer than most people realize. Um, JLab Audio, we are a personal audio company. We were founded in 2005. Our mission is to deliver high performance and innovative headphones and earbuds at affordable prices. Um, our EDI environment is a very heavy environment because we process and ship hundreds of orders daily. Um, in fact, yesterday alone, we shipped 700 orders for 25,000 units. 
We primarily sell to the big box retailers, you the Best Buy, Walmarts, Target, um, Dick's Sporting Goods, Kohl's, uh, some of the uh, pharmacy retailers such as CVS and Walgreens. In addition to that, we also sell on our own website and we're a seller on Amazon. So we also do the business to consumer. Awesome, thanks Rachel. So you both have mentioned how you've integrated the SPS fulfillment solution with your ERPs. And this was something that you put in place prior to 2020. So what did this year throw your way and how did having an integrated EDI solution help? Rachel, do you wanna share first? Uh, sure, so um, what was thrown at us this year, of course, was COVID. <laughs> I think that's pretty much universal for everybody, uh, which uh, and required us closing our office from March to June, and we all worked from home like many of us did. Um, in addition to the challenges that were associated with working from home, where our sales skyrock skyrocketed, we, we never imagined the demand for earbuds and headphones would make us an essential business, which we are now considered essential due to homeschooling, the virtual learning, the online classes, and people just working from home. Our order volume increased substantially, and the number of orders and drop ships uh, for our customers also grew exponentially as well. Let's see the other part of that question there, what Emily? Yeah, so um, in addition to 2020 throwing COVID your way, how did having an integrated EDI solution help? Or what else was thrown at you guys to help? Sure. So we could have never worked from home and scaled up with our sales without having our EDI system being fully integrated with our retailers. Um, we utilize a 3PL warehouse and our EDI integration made this all possible. We send 100% of our orders are sent electronically to our 3PL who does all of our fulfillment and our warehousing. Most of our trading partners are e EDI trading partners. So we also are integrated with our 3PL warehouse whereas our 3PL warehouse pushes data from their system and sends out the advanced ship notifications for us and data goes back into our system. We use NetSuite and we're able to push out the invoices electronically to our customer. So without all of this having been fully automated prior to March, we would have really been struggling um, to uh, handle the uplift that we've had. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Rachel. Really appreciate it. Joe, what about you? Uh, how did system automation help DRI this year? Yeah, um, certainly having it all digital or digital transformation is a big buzzword. Having that already in place um, was huge. So, because uh, previous to having it integrated, there was a lot of two keys. So print out the document and then key it into our ERP system. So having those things integrated was huge. And then like, for example, on the BCS side or on the Nike side, um, we are uh, juggling a lot of different things. So with COVID, with being at home, uh, but then with colleges shutting down, with sports shutting down, with selling fanware. So obviously a lot of different elements were thrown into that mix earlier this year of, hey, how do we, how do we take those orders that we already got and how do we keep them? How do we save them? Can we push out delivery dates? So being able to do that uh, within fulfillment or from within our system and make those changes um, directly has been huge. And then also this time of year, uh, we're already talking about next year's uh, start of college. So the fall 21 season, the start of football, those seasons here in the US, and we're also selling into Canada. So, um, but being able to capture all those orders right now, and then uh, a lot of times with our retail partners, they'll just send us a parent PO. So being able to capture that large PO so we can get in line at the Nike factory in between Nike and Nike and get our orders in there too so we can get all that stuff on time is huge. So uh, being able to juggle all this, like I just ran the numbers and year to date, like there's already over 100,000 EDI documents uh, that we've 
process through SPS's system. Wow, great insights, Jill. Thank you. So we probably have attendees on the call today who are considering whether it's the right time to integrate EDI with their internal systems. Can you both share what triggered your decisions to integrate your ERP and EDI and the process that you went through to, went through to do so? Joe, how about we have you take this one? Yeah, so um, really the, the genesis of all this, I kind of spoke to you about having to deal with paper and key it in again. But really the core problem related to that was we could no longer fit snacks on the snack table. So our account service team, that's where they printed out all the orders and reams of paper uh, were sitting there and we couldn't fit on the cookies for the cookie exchange. So uh, sounds silly, but uh, it definitely uplifted morale to be able to get those orders in digitally, process them digitally, keep them that way and have room for everyone's cookies. Oh, I think that paints a, a great picture. Thanks, Joe. Rachel, what about from the JLab perspective? What triggered your decision to integrate EDI with NetSuite and what was the process you went through? Okay, yes, great question. Um, first, I, I wanna share just a little bit with the audience that um, JLab has grown from the first year I was with the company, $15 million to date, we're a $200 million company. Uh, we did as many uh, sales in September for the month of September of this year than we did in the entire year of 2017. And October, we did as many sales in October as we did in 2018. So we had to scale up at a, a, a tremendous rate. And so what triggered our decision to uh, integrate in go into NetSuite was simply, first of all, we in 2017, we identified that we were just simply outgrowing the system we were using. The sheer volume of orders and advanced ship notification requirements were, were increasing. Um, at the time, before we went into NetSuite, we had only just a few customers integrated in our previous system, but we knew it was the quickest and most efficient way to manage orders and to manage all the retailers' EDI requirements. So in early 2018, we began our migration into NetSuite and with SBS as our partner. And our goal was to fully integrate as many connections um, along with our 3PL uh, to make the automation as efficient as possible. We initially tested in a sandbox environment for about six months, and we went live into production after that. Uh, SBS was a solid partner during this process. They had a tremendous amount of resources to us and went through the, the growing pains with us. Great. So, you know, again, the sure volume of what we were dealing with um, is what really was the driving factor behind full integrating as many accounts as we could. Awesome, thank you. And I know moving from one system to another, like in your case, moving from QuickBooks to NetSuite is a, a common occurrence as well. So it's great to hear that story and how that may have been a trigger event that led to system automation in addition to the volume. Um, so I've got one last question before we go into our Q&A. What advice would you have for our attendees today who are considering system automation, either this year still or early in 2021? Rachel, we can have you start with this one. Sure. Uh, first of all, don't EDI is not go data entry. Which ones are, have the most orders? Which ones have the duplicated advanced ship notifications? I would tackle the ones that are, are really the uh, time um, consumers um, because that's where you're going to gain your time back on the, on the end. And the other thing is you might want to work on any accounts that are maybe hitting you with the highest chargebacks, especially if it's related to advanced ship notifications. You're going to need to go through the growing pains to get the end results of the uh, time that you will gain. Great, and Joe? Yeah, uh, like Rachel said, you know, starting with the most complex ones first, uh, if that makes sense within your organization, so you can get that felt gain of having those in and really offloading other tasks and being more efficient. Um, so for us, uh, one example was a little bit more complex of uh, an arrangement 
is in the, in the colleges that we work with, uh, I didn't realize this until I started, uh, but Barnes & Noble owns a lot of the college bookstores. And those are, those are stores we sell into. And uh, so Barnes & Noble uh, has it set up where we actually do a reverse 850. So we're uh, starting the PO and we're sending it to them and they're approving it. So having that workflow figured out uh, has been huge for us as well. So um, tackling those things so you can get those gains and use fancy buzzwords like digital transformation. Uh, but really at the end of the day, it's about getting rid of stuff like this and uh, just increasing the overall lift for your teams and they're doing stuff that has more value. Awesome. Well, thank you so much to both of you. This was really great advice that I'm sure our audience will be able to use. Kirby, I'll hand it back to you. And I do recall you mentioning prizes earlier. I did mention prizes earlier. And uh, we do have uh, a couple of prizes to give away. Uh, before we move into the Q&A, um, just want to let you know, when you joined today's event, your name was actually entered into a drawing for this multi-device wireless charging pad that allows you to keep uh, your smartphone devices uh, charged and ready to go when you are. So we do have a couple of winners here. The first one is Robert Oliver. Congratulations. Uh, you're the, the winner of the first one. And Duran Dilmanian, uh, you are the winner of the second one. So congratulations on that. Uh, well, that, with that, we're actually going to go ahead and move into uh, some Q&A. Uh, so don't forget, uh, if you do have questions, go ahead and post them in the Q&A section of the Zoom meeting. And uh, with that, we'll go ahead and bring back the panelists. All right, so we'll go ahead and, and kick this off. The first question that we have is, uh, is what happens when a third party warehouse uh, does your shipping? Uh, do you still need to add freight information, pick out what shipping to go with, et cetera? So uh, I don't know, Megan, maybe do you wanna take that one and, uh, and see, what, uh, see what you got there? Yeah, Kirby, it sounds great, thank you. Uh, that's an excellent question. So what I demoed in fulfillment today the ability to book a shipment and pick the, pick the rate that's best for your business is available for suppliers who are often managing the shipping themselves. We recognize that a lot of our customers are working with 3PL, 4PL, or 5PL, other logistic parties or warehouses that manage that on their behalf. Um, if you are in that position or scenario where a warehouse is managing shipping for you, then no, you would not need to select those shipping options in fulfillment. A couple key callouts if your warehouses um, would benefit from that, they could always log into fulfillment on your behalf. Or like Emily mentioned, some of our add-on features like system automation, we can automate order data to a warehouse so they have all of that information as needed so they can manage the shipping on your behalf. And with that, I'll just invite Emily to, to add anything I may have missed in answering that question. I think you did a great job covering it, Megan. Um, so that's where I think it really is going to depend on what your, your third party shipping provider is doing for you, but a lot of them will take on that responsibility on your behalf. Right, we have another one here. Um, I don't know, maybe you know, this one's uh, maybe up your alley, but how well does the solution flex when, uh, when you're doing things like bringing on new products? Can you speak to that? Just like Kirby. Oh, I, I, we had a question around new products and, and how well does the solution flex when you're bringing on new products? Um, yeah, I can take that. Uh, so if you think about apparel um, and style, color, size is a skew. Well, in our case, if you add a school logo to that, um, you just exponentially exploded your number of SKUs uh, that you're gonna have in our system. Um, so for us, uh, uh, having a way to add those in by school, because the same, you can sell the same black t-shirt or black polo to all the colleges out there. Uh, and so having that ability within 
um, the system to upload those new UPC numbers and that sort of thing has been huge for us because uh, what I've learned is custom decorated apparel is deceptively complex. So it's helpful to make that easy. Interesting, thank you. Um, we have one here, uh, it says, can you work with, a, uh, with different customers and merge their needs with your system? With different customers to merge their needs with your system. Um, customers meeting trading partners, I'm assuming here, but um, I don't know, Emily, can you just maybe talk about if I'm interpreting this the right way, how we account for uh, the, the variance in, in requirements uh, from customers or from, from trading partners? Yeah, absolutely. I can take a stab. And of course, um, if we're not addressing the question correctly, just sure. know and, and add some uh, additional context in there. But regardless of the trading partner that you're working with, or whether you have one trading partner or 100 trading partners, you can connect to all of them through SPS. And you can also manage all of their varying needs um, through SPS as well. So the way we're able to do that is through the pre-built maps that we've got within our network today. So we're already pre-connected to over 4,000 different buying organizations or trading partners. We're managing all of their requirements and adhering to them on your behalf and then taking on all of that heavy lifting. So when we normalize that data in our system, that's where we can work closely with you to understand how do your needs and requirements compare to those trading partner needs and requirements and then fill in any gaps for you so you don't have to worry about taking that burden on or adjusting your system to accommodate EDI. Really all that heavy lifting is done within our network so you can really focus on managing and running your business. So I hope that helps address the question, um, but again, if not, let us know. And just to add on to that, the other thing with Fulfillment Monitor is, um, yeah, you have Fulfillment, which is all web-based. And then if you've integrated in your trading partners, you can use Fulfillment Monitor to have a one view across those different things. So that's also helpful for us. We have multiple companies. So uh, obviously we have different logins for each company. So when you keep that straight, uh, they're actually a completely separate silo so they're on different ERP systems. So um, that, that's why my subtitle's so long because I'm consistently hopping in and hopping out and going, hey, what, what company am I thinking about right now? Sure, all right, maybe got time for one more here. Uh, we had a question around uh, our customer or, or a company using uh, another EDI provider for AS2 communications. Uh, oftentimes we'll see retailers require AS2. And this particular company has another trading partner that would like to use FTP, just another type of communication channel. Um, I don't know, maybe Emily, another good one for you. Uh, would SPS be able to provide any sort of link between FTP and AS2 and, and, uh, and how, you know, what does that look like? Yeah, so the different connectivity methods are something that we support as far as our offering goes as well. So if you are utilizing AS2 today, that is the preferred way for how you want to connect between your trading partners and systems and you don't want to build out or establish an FTP connection, we would be able to support that for you. So regardless of how your customer wants to connect, again, whether it is AS2, FTP, or VAN exchange, we'll facilitate that all for you and be able to connect uh, directly and isolate you from any of those various needs. So again, you would just have one connection that you would have to manage between SPS and your trading partners. Got it. Thanks. How about one more? I think we got time for, for one more here. Um, we get this one often, uh, and, and Ginger, I'd be curious to, to get your take on this, but how do you justify uh, the cost of an EDI subscription uh, with SPS? Can you speak to that? Well, I guess as far as the cost, you mean just the expense versus... Yeah, yeah, versus hiring somebody to, to do it within your four, your four walls. I would just have to say that it is it was it's it's much less expensive than hiring a person, mm -hmm. if that's what the question sorta of is. Um, like I said, we just we we had had such an abundance of employees that we had to hire because we could not keep up. We were keeping up with the shipments, but we could not keep up with the manual entry. It was just yes. like you know, and um, it was you know you level it off, and I'd have to say it's probably you know, a good 50% cheaper than hiring all the employees. It's, it's 
a lot. It's it's well worth the money again, like I could say. Perfect. No. Hey, Kirby, let me yeah. add something back to the AS2 FTP conversation. Uh, something that can get lost in the weeds there, that's another value prop for SPS, is this X12 code is, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, Emily and Megan, but I think it's a 1970s standard. And it is super painful to read. True? True. True. So, uh, and something that SPS has done from day one was recognizing that and going, hey, can we take XML or AKA looking at data through a modern lens and deliver the documents that way? So we receive in those documents in the XML standard, and it's a lot easier to work with uh, than the X12 uh, standard. So uh, I know earlier you were talking about the connection, but really the actual data on the page or the digital file, um, that's another big value add is having that standard. Thanks, Joe. Kirby, I got one more quick, one more thing that I should add. Sure. We did have a lot of error rates with, you know, people typing in wrong addresses. You can't put a price on the information being loaded correctly mm -hmm. from the customer basis, their own address, their name, their phone number. I mean, you can't even put an expense on the error rate is zero. It's, there is no errors. So that's another, if I think that's a yes. really important point that needs people need to understand. Right. Right. No, great ad. Well, thank you. Um, we are uh, unfortunately out of time. We could, uh, I'm sure, spend uh, a lot longer uh, in this dialogue. And, and um, thank you so much, Ginger and Rachel and, and Joe and Emily, Megan and Andrew, uh, for the lively conversation. Um, and thanks, everybody, for, uh, for joining us today. Uh, hopefully you found this valuable as well. And uh, hopefully you got a, a tip or two from the discussion. Um, do keep a lookout for an email from SPS with a, with a summary of today's discussion, then also an invitation to take a, just a quick survey about the event. We'd love to hear, uh, hear what you thought. And as a small thank you for completing that survey, we'll actually send you a $5 uh, Starbucks gift card. Uh, and lastly, uh, if you'd like to learn more uh, about SPS uh, and about a, uh, how a full service provider can help during these challenging and unprecedented times, uh, go ahead and reach out to SPS. Uh, we'd love to, to further the conversation with you. Uh, and once again, uh, we'd just like to thank you for joining us. Have a great day, everyone.